that's 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 just been me in general like i'm typically a very positive and optimistic person and like to the point to where some people are just like you're not being very very uh, rational or you're not being very realistic and i was just like it's not that i don't think that those negative or bad things can happen it's just like i just don't choose to put my energy towards that right i don't put i don't i don't want to put my focus there because it's not going to do me any good uh like one of my favorite quotes is like it's not always the strongest man that that ends up winning sometimes it's just the guy that thinks he can right and yeah. it's just like you know you could have seven three matchup uh, you know snake eyes geef versus versus dalsam but when he comes out on top like you think his mentality was just like man dalsam i'm gonna lose again Nah, he's probably complaining about floating all this other stuff, right? But when he wins, when he wins, like you know, you, you don't think he gets like a natural, natural high off of beating that tough matchup, like. You know. absolute guard podcast yes welcome this is episode 60 my name is benny and as always i'm joined by my co-host john and also our i guess i'd say our triple threat partner <laughs> the x button how are you guys doing today what's up hey i'm doing, doing good. pretty good cool cool um so we've been gone for a couple weeks uh mainly due to john getting married which is official now so yeah congratulations uh, yeah, congratulations, oh, John. That was a that was a fun little uh, excursion for us. Uh, <laughs> do you want to talk a little bit uh, briefly about that before we get yeah, going? Yeah, sure. Um, so that's kind of where I've been after Evo. I, um, you know, so actually, let me take it a step back. We got engaged in April of 2022. Wait, oh. what year is it? 20, yeah, uh, April of 2022, <laughs> I think. So it, it's been a long engagement. It's been about two years. Um, and we had we were looking to get married prior to that, but then the pandemic happened, and so like it was kind of hard to really plan a wedding during all that. Um, so we've been planning this wedding for about a year and a half. Um, it it had its own like unique uh, constraints in that we wanted to do it on a train, um, that train that was actually really important to us from as far as like first dates go. Uh, first like real like big relationship dates uh, i think i actually met her family on the on the train first train excursion uh -huh. um and uh so we wanted to recreate that for our wedding um so that uh working working on a train uh having a train wedding uh at a, at a very large scale in a post-pandemic world uh there were a lot of challenges to make that happen and so uh you know i I think towards the towards as we got closer and closer to the date, basically after Evo, I wasn't real. I'm not really as active competitively. Um, I haven't yeah. really been practicing as hard. We've been focusing more on the wedding. That's just, all that said is like, I still ended up playing a little bit here and there because you, you can only get away from this game for so long or get away from this podcast for so long even. Um, but yeah. uh, when we actually had the wedding this past well, weekend on October 21st, um, it was uh, really awesome. Everything came together. There were little things that went wrong here and there, but, uh, a lot of stuff went right. Um, and it was just a really wonderful experience. Uh, a lot of, a lot of folks, uh, that were, that are part of the fighting game community were actually there. Um, you, both of you yeah. included <laughs> your whole family was there, Benny. Yeah. Um, yeah. and it, it was just a good time uh, overall. I think, uh, I was definitely super stressed about it and things kind of went off pretty uh pretty well overall um i even something as simple as like this podcast like the sound equipment that i used for this podcast we ended up using at the after party so like a <laughs> lot of like a lot of the break that we've been on like it's just been, been because of the wedding in so many ways like we i haven't been able to um set everything back up and today's like the first day that i'm using all the new audio equipment that we got for the karaoke party at the wedding and now it's working here too 
So nice, yeah. nice. Yeah, I gotta say, um, yeah, it was a, definitely something different in terms of like the the wedding in terms of doing the train and stuff. But uh, I told a few people like that was that was a nice welcome change from like the kind of traditional kind of thing that people would do in terms of like introducing the wedding party and then doing all these dances and then you know okay it's time to eat guys and stuff like that. So it's kind of cool to just be like, all right, we got these four cars in the train. You guys, you guys yeah. are assigned to this one. Just sit down and you guys mingle from here on out and just kind of hang out. And I thought that was pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. I made a joke a couple of times and it's kind of like snow piercer. <laughs> and, then, and then I was like, we basically started at the end of the train where the bridal part or the, the wedding party is. And then we ended up like working our way all the way to the front of our cars, uh, where to where our families were. And then, trying to work your way through that when everybody wants to talk to you and, you know, cause they're here to celebrate, they're at the wedding to celebrate you and everything. Um, yeah. but it was, it's a lot like running a tournament in a lot of ways. Like a lot of people yeah. want your attention for different things. Um, but, yeah. uh, and then I, my mind's running a mile a minute trying to think of all the different parallel threads that are happening at the event at the time. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, man? Did you have anything to, to say about the wedding or just that in general? Uh, no, it was a lot of fun. Um, the train's so unique. It's such a cool experience. Um, I've only been on a bullet train when I went to go visit in Japan. So to actually just mm. be on an actual very old school style train is just beautiful. It's nice. Cheers. Yeah. yeah, it was a fun ride. So um, besides that, I mean, we've had quite a few things happening here in the scene. Um, I think the most recent thing, we actually just had a, had a tournament last weekend. Um, that was uh, Secret Lab 3, right? Correct. And that's hosted by the gaming zone. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So we just had that happen. Um, who ended up winning that? That was Christian, uh, Mr. Sia. Yep. First place. Yeah. I believe that's yeah. his first uh, Street Fighter Six tournament win. Yeah, yep. local win. Yep. And then second place ended up being Saber AZ, uh, aka yep. Scott. And then third place was uh, Big Mac Combo. Is it ninety eight? I always forget the number. Uh, it's uh, he told me a little story about it. It should be his story, but I, I believe his tournament tag is ninety eight. Because it's either ninety eight okay. or ninety six. Gotcha, gotcha. So that's 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 somebody that we've had on the show too. So those were those are the top three. Um, how'd you end up faring in the tournament, um, Maynard? Uh, I actually ranked at fifth. Um, I was able to get into the winners semifinals. Um, I unfortunately lost to Sia uh, for that, and then I immediately lost to Big Mac after that in fifth place. Um, oh, okay. Had to climb an interesting hill. Um, I did get a buy my first round. Uh, the person that I was supposed to fight, unfortunately, did not make it. Uh, I then took on a new person, uh, Norm the Third. I don't know if you heard about this podcast yet, but hey, if you do listen back to this, it was a great fight. Uh, he played Blanca, and uh, knowing Blanca, he's uh, my train one of my training partner, uh, Ghidorah. So yeah. I was able to use some of the tricks of the trade that uh, Ghidorah has taught me to be able to beat him. He it was close. It was a two one match, and I think we did go down to the wire um okay second match i did fight Ghidorah, and i had a complete upset taking him to zero and yeah. uh it was definitely very shocking to see that uh result it's a match that we did stream so i do recommend that you watch it and check it out um <laughs> yeah I, mean, I had my roommate commentate it the commentary is hilarious um, yeah i i didn't really have room i was commentating with him i, I kind of just kind of sat back there and just let him do his thing because he <laughs> he seemed to really really be wanting to talk during that time so i was just like I was like, go ahead, man. I was kind of just laughing it off the whole time because, yeah, because <laughs> he kind of caught me off guard. But, uh, yeah, that, like that, yeah, that was a really good set. Um, uh, I can't say I was really surprised. I just say it seemed like, for the most part, uh, Ghidorah kind of, kind of got, I'd say, a little impatient towards the end, and was just kind of just trying things. And I was just, and you were, you were really good about being patient and then taking advantage of that because it's real easy to like you know, have a game plan and then somebody just kind of go on tilt and then you get caught by all kinds of weird stuff because they're, they're at the point to where they're like, what I'm doing, what I'm doing isn't working anymore. So let me just do this. And if it hits, then, you know, we snowball from there and hope for the best. And you did, you did really, really well to kind of weather the storm and end up, end up taking that set uh, pretty easily. Yeah. Thank you. That, that slow, like patient reactive style into burst counterplay like i think that one thing that i found really like i find really interesting about that style of play is that it's very um dependent on how well you can 
deal with whatever bullshit they throw at you. And mm -hmm. when you're playing against a training partner and you know what they're going to do already, yeah. um, like that, the effectiveness of that style skyrockets. Um, yeah. And then I think over time, like just in general, as you get better at playing that reactive style, like I think that's a, it's a less volatile way than just trying to go in and trying to, you know, punch them in the face constantly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was the one bit of commentary that I snuck in in the beginning was just the fact that you guys were training partners. And it's, those are the kind of situations where like people that don't know that you guys are training partners are going to be like, why are they playing this way? Or why aren't they, why isn't this character doing this? And it's just like, because you guys have played so many matches, it's like, this thing doesn't work or this setup, you know, that you would typically see maybe in like a normal tournament match. Like they know that setup. So they're just like, no, nah, I can't do this. Like you kind of, you kind of get into your own head, you know, playing against a training partner. Cause you're just like, they know all my tricks. Like I can't get away with, you know, some of this stuff that I'd normally get away with like in a, in a tournament in the first to two tournament setting against a random, like, you know, you go to Evo and you're just like, you know what, let me pull out all of my, all of the stuff that I have and see what they know how to deal with. Like it's a big knowledge check. Right. But against your training partner, like you don't have that advantage. It's just like, okay, well, if I have in the corner and I do this, like, he knows how to deal with this. So I'm going to do something else like your, you know, the layers to your mix ups and, and things like that. Like, yeah, you, you kind of get into your own head and just start maybe overthinking sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I see that in a, like in, in two different ways, like people respond to it in two different ways. Like they'll either kind of, kind of do what you mentioned, Benny, where it's like, Hey, if my normal bag of tricks doesn't work, then I have to dig deeper and come up with new tricks or mm -hmm. alternatively, Hey, my bag of tricks doesn't work. I'm going to change when I do them instead. Yeah. And I think that that's the, the, both of those carry, carry further risk. Um, but they have to take that, those risks when your opponent is already, you know, three or four extra steps into the mind game. Exactly. Yeah. When they're familiar with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I had a, I had a similar path because like, well, I don't know that person's not new. I think, uh, was it Paul Rudd? Uh, I've heard that name at one of our tournaments before, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, no. uh, he actually goes by Paul Rudd. I don't know what his actual name is, but he's in more of an anime fighter. I know he's usually okay. in the anime crew. Maybe that's where I heard his name then. Because, like, yeah, he played Rashid. Like, he seemed a little, uh, maybe a little uneasy with the Dawson matchup. Because typically, like, Rashid players, like, I expect them to kind of rush me down. I mean, I don't know if that's, like, PTSD from playing Freezy all the time when, when he was playing or what. But, uh, I'm used to, I mean, even, even, even online, I'm, I'm used to the Rashid players just rushing me down and just like, I don't know how to deal with stuff. So when they were kind of passive and I was hitting them with certain things, I was just like, okay, I was like, well, I'll deal with this. Like, I'm perfectly fine playing this way. And then mm -hmm. I beat them. And then, well, yeah, I had a, I also had a first round buy because whoever I was playing against wasn't there. So uh, I got a DQ win from that, beat Paul Rudd. Then I ran into Sia, just like you. That match was on the stream right after your match. Um, yeah, it's really like there's there's certain things in that match um, where I was really happy with how I was playing, and then there was other parts where like I knew right away, like I missed opportunities. So, um, I mean, that's something that I've talked about in the past in terms of like even when I play ranked, I like local record all my stuff, right? And like if I lose or even if I win, like depending on the how things went, I might immediately look back and be like, I could have closed it out right here. Like I had the meter, I had this, I had this, like I could have won right here. And like, even if I win, like, yeah, I'm satisfied that I won, but it's just like, I could have won 20 seconds earlier right here. Yep. Right. The same thing when I lose, like, okay, I could have closed it out here, but instead I gave them another opportunity and then I ended up ultimately losing. So like, I've been doing a lot of like self-reflection and review on that. And like, there were, yeah, there was definitely moments where, um, one in particular where I felt like I could have closed out that second game earlier. Or, or at least had a much better uh, advantage at the end. And then, I mean, it worked out in my favor anyway, but still, it's just like, um, that's just kind of been my my journey in terms of like improvement is just looking at looking at situations like that and just like, you know what, if I had done this instead, this outcome would have been sooner. And like, who knows what, you know, who knows how things go after that. But um, anyway, after that, I lost to, uh, I played Freezy's Chun-Li uh, off stream, ended up losing to them. Uh, but I think I played, I had my son actually record that off on the side. So I still have that footage and like, yeah, I feel, I felt like, cause I played him in a first to 10, like within the last week and he beat me 10 to two. And oh. like, I wasn't really upset about that. It was more just like, 
I hadn't really played as Chun Li at all. I think maybe in like one set, if that. And then like, sort of, you know, I, I've had some trouble with that matchup, but I've had also had experience in that matchup playing John a lot. So it's just like it's kind of a little bit of both because I was just like, well, I got to learn what he likes to do, and then like, you know, kind of overcome like the problems that I have with the matchup myself. And like, I think I won the first game, and then he won the next three. So I mean, overall, I felt like I did better playing against him then than I did, you know, in that ten that ten two that we had a, like a few days ago. I'm still catching up on all the footage. Uh, rewinding back to see uh, who was he playing? Because he plays two different characters. Uh, he played Guile. From what I understand, like he doesn't like the Ryu versus Dalsim matchup, and I don't blame him. Um, you got to deal with a lot more fireball recovery, so. I could basically like react to the fireballs with like the uh, the down forward fears, you know that kind of stuff. And yeah, and I think I think Guile's a much better better matchup for him. So I don't know if um, if it's it was just Dalsim in particular, or maybe there was other characters too where he felt like Guile was a you know a good uh, secondary character to have along with his Ryu. Gotcha. I think. Um the recurring theme i'm noticing is that like both of y'all seem to be practicing a lot more like um i, I want to call it like like consistency i guess so it's mm -hmm. less about like pra trying to practice new things or even trying to learn new matchups but it's more about like tightening what you're already doing right yeah and i i feel like there's this there's an ebb and flow to it like i i I would say like right after the game came out, like realistically from the beta, like I, I already knew most of my, the tech that I wanted to start with, start the game with. Um, and so like, it was, it was really straightforward to just kind of like change a couple combos here and there at launch, but fundamentally play the same way. Um, mm -hmm. And then from there, like I focused a lot more about making sure those combos that I had, I landed them over and over again, or I was able to convert off them in every particular instance. And I did that kind of tightening exercise that, that you guys were talking about. They were like, here's a spot where I could have won. And now I'm actually finding limitations in the tool set that I have though, because I've tuned it so much now that it's just like, you know, a two or three like really strong things that I'm repeating over and over again. So I'm actually kind of going back to the discovery phase of being like, okay, now I need to add more things and I need to figure out mm -hmm. more matchups and stuff like that. And I feel like, we're just going to all be constantly going on this ebb and flow of, of like fixing your lower bound and then fixing your upper and then a adding to your upper bound, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I think for me, like, so like I talked about this before in terms of like, I started this game really, really slow, like out of the gates. Like I felt, I felt pretty bad about the way I was playing. Like I felt like I was behind, uh, behind everybody in terms of like, actually like understanding how to play the game and like the game mechanics and stuff like that. And like, you know, I did my placement matches. I started in the silver with, with Sim. Right. And that was after a couple of weeks of playing Honda and whatnot. Right. So I went in with Sim and like, for me, like, I know that there's, um, I guess people nowadays, you know, they call it the, the yoga blender in, in our like Sim discord or whatnot, or, you know, the, the whole offensive kind of, uh okay setups and stuff like that you, you do and like for me like i knew that those things existed but i didn't want to focus on that because i felt like i needed to focus on movement and spacing and like neutral and understanding my character like real real basic stuff and then as i got better like i would eventually incorporate that and like you know this is what we're how many months into the game now um less than six yeah less than six months yep. and it's just like so in some ways, like I felt like the the negative to that is the fact that I have to kind of unlearn some things and, and muscle memory and kind of habits that I have right now to incorporate those setups. But yeah. I, f I felt like that was a much better approach for me was to get a better understanding of like, how do how do I maneuver this character and deal with the game mechanics and what the other characters present? And then I can add these things to my game later. Because yeah. otherwise, it was just like, okay, yeah, I could do this setup off of forward throw, and I can do this, but how do I avoid everything else? Or how do I how do I move, and how do I how do I deal with like the neutral situation? So that's kind of just been how I've been building myself up, and uh, I think it's working pretty well right now. Like I feel like I don't feel like I've plateaued at at any point. It's just like 
um, you talk about like learning little things here and there, and that's just kind of how I put it. Like I've tried not to like overwhelm myself with too much, and it's just like every every week, like I'm looking at a certain thing, and I'm like, all right, I want to incorporate this. Whether it's like jab combos in the knockdowns is like the thing now, yeah. and then probably next week, after, you know, when I feel comfortable with that, then I'll be like, all right, let me let me learn some of these more advanced like okay setups and and where I can go from here. Because that's where I feel right now that my game is lacking is like I'm finally getting to the point to where like my damage output is is much better. And now it's like, OK, how do I snowball my offense and take advantage of that? It, it, it's like you don't have you don't have an issue starting like creating the opportunities. You have an issue executing on those opportunities. Right. Yeah. Or capitalizing on them is a better way to put it. Exactly. Um, yeah. Because yeah. Because like when, when we've played, even like in the sets that we've played, you've even said, or I mean, or that you've watched, like when I've been streaming on Discord or something, you've been like, "So what are you gonna do next?" And like, <laughs> I have an idea of like what I want to do, but it's not like any kind of like okay setup, right? Like it's not something that's that's advantageous to me. It's like okay, so you just went back in the neutral, and now you're just like poking at him again. And I was like, so now you got to find another opportunity. And I was just like, yeah. I was just like, it would be a lot easier if I was just in there and, you know, getting to kind of dictate things until they figure it out. Yeah. So, yeah, that's been a that's been a big, big thing for me lately. It, it's a it's a it's a tough one because like when you when you start like looking to capitalize on those opportunities, you do end up becoming more rote over like over time, like you end up trying to you fall into patterns a lot easier because that's what those setups are. They're patterns. Mm -hmm. um, so playing fluid and loose i think is a very uh it's still a viable strategy it's just that like the weakness is the weakness of it is that you aren't always you're gonna drop the soap sometimes you know yeah. um another thing that uh, you, you brought on you mentioned earlier about learning little bits at a time and, and not getting overwhelmed um i've been thinking a lot about uh the difference between street fighter 5 and street fighter 6 and, and Street Fighter 4 as well. And one of the legitimate criticisms that I, that I found for Street Fighter 5 is that you couldn't really approach the game like how you met, mentioned approaching 6, where you're like, I'm going to try a little bit of column A and a little bit of column B, and it's not going to be optimal, but I'm just going to you know kind of get playing. In, in 5, the, the gameplay was distilled down so much that you had to basically start that li like linearly. You had to start with B and Bs because there wasn't enough combo freedom to really allow for, you know, get me by combos, just, you know, like a, a basic combo. Um, you had to actually learn all those links and stuff. And there was target combos and stuff, but fundamentally even that stuff wasn't, wasn't expressive enough. And so people felt they were being railroaded into, I've got to go into training mode. I've got to learn a medium, medium button combo and a, and a, and a jab, jab combo. And, you don't get to learn in that kind of like more holistic style that you mentioned, Benny. Um, so I, I, I acknowledge that as a legitimate weakness of Street Fighter V because of how sterilized the combat was uh, in, in the name of balance and realistically in the name of lack of development time and, and development issues. But yeah. um, six, I think there's a lot more. And four had this as well, where you had like gradients of combos where you could you could have all this different freedom in the combo system that will allow you to have easy combos, medium combos, and hard combos. And they all have the same starter, so you can kind of choose your own adventure and then get right into playing right away, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, one thing I mentioned was just, like, the fact that I uh, locally record, like, my stuff, and, like, I look at those as, at those replays, and that's, that's something that we've kind of... Well, actually, I wanted to kind of... Um, start with our our local group was to start replay reviews for for various players oh, yeah. especially some of the ones that were um you know down on themselves or kind of like you know trying to get over that hump of like platinum or diamond and it's it's something that i got uh the idea from was was, was from one of the uh the Dalsum discords that i'm in because like um i've seen they have a channel in there and basically you know so the one of the guys in there um He'll ask people to post reviews. Hey, I got time to look these over, and I'll give you give you insight on what's going on and like what's you know how you can better approach or things that you you know holes in your game that kind of stuff. And like you know, granted, again, these players, some of the players, most of the players that have been, I've seen posting were, um, yeah, stuck in platinum, stuck in diamond. So you know, it's it's easy for me, especially you know being at a a little bit higher level than they are, to kind of see where they're missing out on opportunities. But it's also been insightful to me, also in terms of like 
just the general approach to to how to play the game is sim. So it's something that I that I that I wanted to start for like our local group, and like we actually me and me and Maynard here did one for uh, for uh, Heidi that was in our in our group uh, that played Marissa. Like I wanted to start basically with um, I mean one I didn't really know kind of like what the punish options were. It's like I know what I get hit by, but I don't know what those moves are. You know what I mean? <laughs> sure. So I was like, yeah. let me talk to a resident uh, Marissa player that can say, hey this is what you could have done in this situation. And that's kind of how I wanted to approach it. You just we gave actually... me an idea for a future absolute guard series. Like matchup <laughs> breakdown. So we just do a podcast episode per matchup. Yeah. <laughs> we actually did a second episode too. Um, uh, it was uh, for Fizzy Cups. Fizzy Cups, who oh, yeah. uh, are unfortunately like lost a tournament match against Blanca. And uh, we were able to pull Ghidorah in as well. And uh, like Fizzy Cups definitely like is a master and is in our skill range. So it's like, we can't just provide like the, the basic fundamentals. Like they already kind of know that, but having Ghidorah in the call as well and being able yeah. to see where the Blanca's options were and what Blanca was thinking, like from a Blanca perspective, it helped a lot. And uh, Rika did post positively about that replay review. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah that, I, one, that one was kind of tough. Cause like you said, like, like they're at a skill level that you know is basically around us, or you know they're they're better than us too in in way in a lot of ways. And it was kind of like, yeah, you can't be like, okay, you need an anti air more. You did this, like, you know what I mean? It's just like, yeah, that's helpful, but it's just like we needed to dig a little bit deeper. So like, yeah, Ghidorah's, Ghidorah's help with that was just like, yeah, this isn't this isn't something that's real, or you could have done this instead. Like, that was that was real insightful and helpful. I feel like the um the product or the mission for those replay analyses isn't isn't even necessarily like tech or anything like that it's just about like having a constructive discussion about the matchup as it's going on right yeah um and so you regardless of who's better than the other or like it, it's more about it's more about just fe- like throwing things at the wall and seeing what sticks basically like if, if someone yeah. gives me like a, a nugget of information that would um you know, change the matchup for me or get, get in, give me an opportunity to get into somebody's head and figure out what they're thinking and why they would, you know, choose an option in a rock, paper, scissors situation. Mm-hmm. Um, that's going to be extremely insightful and beneficial. It doesn't matter who that's coming from fundamentally. Um, yeah. I, I think that that's, that's actually like a, it's also a good um, ego check too um, because it's yeah. really easy to ask for feedback, but it's another thing to actually take the feedback. Yeah. Um, a lot of people, I think, there are times when I, I've I've been people have requested feedback from me after yeah. I've beaten them or something, and it turns into like, you know, oh, you don't actually want the feedback; you just want to find a way to rationalize why you lost. <laughs> and it, it at that point, it's like, oh, I'm I'm a punching bag. You just want to yell. You just want to tell me why you lost. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And you want to argue with me about the replay analysis because you want to tell me why you lost and why you think you should have won. And so like those, it's really difficult to, to have those kinds of conversations uh, and to be able to take that feedback critically and, uh, and uh, uh, objectively, I suppose. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's a good like ego exercise of building that resilience and being like, can I, can I actually uh, deconstruct this feedback, push aside any emotions or any egos and then focus solely on the purpose of getting better and, you know, in, in, in a lot of cases, you know, tap into some form of humility. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's something that I that I talked about in the in the Discord group too. Was in terms of like the coaching that you were giving me. Like, I know you were you were you, you seemed kind of hesitant at times, and you're just like, oh, you know, I don't know if I'm coming off too brash or or this and that, or if I'm being too hard on you. <laughs> and or, or yeah. you know, or you'd even say like, I've known you know, I've known you long enough that you know what, this is just going to be tough love, and this is what it is. And <laughs> you know, and I'm perfectly fine with that. And like, that's something that. We talked about with uh, with said 3s when he was on the shows in terms of like his coaching style and like the ways that you know sometimes you have to alter like how you teach people like yeah like he came from an era i i, I come from an era where it's like you kind of have this a lot of people had this style where you kind of like berate people and kind of tear them down to to build them back up right yep and it's just like okay don't do this. Why are you doing this? You know, that's not a good option. You know, that's, that's terrible. What are you doing? Right. And then, you know, then kind of giving them an ego boost and, and, you know, uh, promoting them when they're, when they're doing, when they do something well, and you're just like, Oh yeah, that's, that's what I want to see. Right. And, you know, those kind yeah. of things. And it's just like that, that, you know, 
like I said, that works perfectly fine for me. Like I'm, I know like those are deficiencies in my game. So like when I was, when I was playing and like, or when I was like streaming in discord and like you were like calling out stuff, I was just like, yeah, that was dumb. Like, what am I doing? And then like, I'd fix it, you know, I'd do something different. And then you're just like, oh yeah, yeah that's exact. This, this is better. Like, that's the best, that's the best punish I've seen you do. That's the best, you know, thing that you've done after this situation. And then, you know, for me, that's perfectly fine. But again, like I said, like some people may not deal with that the same way, or like yeah. you said, they might just look at it and just be like, okay, yeah, whatever. And just kind of chalk it up <laughs> to the character or, you know, you know what? Oh, uh, that's just that's just the JP thing. That's just the Chun Li thing. That's just the DJ thing. Whatever. And I'm just like, you know, you can boil it down to to more than that. Like it, that's that's the cop out, right? That's the easy cop out is just to be like, yeah, they're just top tier. And I'm just like, yeah, but yeah. you know, for me, like I get a ton of satisfaction from beating a top tier. Like, yeah, I look at it like, you know, I don't think I think it's human nature to like, you know, see that ranked match screen come up or that little preview screen that comes up in six and just like, ah, damn, I can. And I'm just yeah. like, you know what? I'm gonna shut this one down, right? Like that's my that's my mentality, right? It's not just like, oh damn, I can, like oh, I might as well. I lost ten points already, right? Like that's not my mentality. It's just like I look at the character, and then when that when that that uh, head to head screen comes up, I look at how much how many how much MR they have or whatever points they have, and I'm just like, all right, I'm taking those. Like, yeah, oh, this that, is gonna be tough, LR but now, huh? but I'm but I'm taking those, right? Like this is a good opportunity for me, me to take a big chunk of MR from this guy and to and to move myself up. Like that's my mentality when I go in. Yeah, I I would say like I am probably like I I'm I'm the hardest on both of you two uh, in particular I think so you guys have gotten probably the rawest form of coaching that I have, <laughs> uh, which is also like in the middle of wedding planning stress coaching, <laughs> so I'm not gonna say that all of it was like deeply planned. Oh yes, I was deliberately being harsh so that way you could have you know a specific adaptation to impose demand or anything, <laughs> but. <laughs> It was more like, oh man, I'm stressed out about my wedding. I'm gonna take it out on Maynard and Betty. <laughs> so that's the part I apologize for. But I also am uh, 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 thrilled and and uh, humbled to to know that you guys took that uh, negative energy and turned it into something constructive, um, yeah. such as Maynard in in this clip that's on the video player playing right now, just shimmied uh Ghidorah and baited the uppercut and killed him. <laughs> I think that was a delay uppercut too. So it he was. did a Tony uppercut. That's a that's a that's a big psychic play. That one was going uh, <laughs> deep into our our lore, our history of fighting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you talked about uh, that you guys had recently done a review um, of your, of your, one of those tournament matches that you just had had made. And so how 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 did you think that went? Uh, the actual match I felt really good about as a as a whole. Oh, I'm um, sorry. Uh, which, which match was this? This is Sia, uh, who was playing Guile at start versus my Marissa. Yeah. And uh, so, so funny enough, I want to say the first Secret Labs three months ago, um, we, me and Tia fought, and I actually fought his Ryu at the time three months ago, and I got him to switch from Ryu to Guile, and I got <laughs> shut down, and it was terrible, and I was like, damn, that character swap like really threw off my tempo, and to see it come now, where I start off fighting his Guile, and it started off with the one zero him, I made a few mistakes on our first game where uh, I was probably testing things that I probably shouldn't have tested stuff that I should know beforehand. Uh, mm -hmm. But for two also putting myself in a, a crazy risk, risky situation for almost no reason, like for just a little bit of data, like the, the weight in, of uh, the weight of reward was too little for the big of the, the height of the risk. Gotcha. So that was something that uh, was brought to me like my attention is like you know at hindsight that 100 percent makes sense like i shouldn't have tested that then and there especially the the winning round for uh a match um so he took the first one and then i shut him down completely in the second and third game so i took it to one two and i felt really good about it because uh i've never seen see uh kind of go so fast to select character i always see him kind of chilling for a minute think about switching characters but no he he, he definitely went quickly and uh it was interesting because he went straight to ryu and kind of the reverse happened from three months ago <laughs> uh he didn't shut me down with ryu and i was like trying to figure out like why some of the my mentality was uh previously like uh the, the day before i actually got the opportunity to fight john in a first to ten and oh yeah i forgot I, about that i took it to <laughs> nine eight yeah and 
And I think I cracked there too, where I took it to nine eight, and I kind of saw the finishing line, and I kind of pushed every point of advantage where I wasn't playing patiently anymore. I was just, I want to end this now. I yeah, want to end this quick before he could breathe. And mm-hmm. that's probably where my mistakes were. Um, I got predictable and uh, things got bad. So in this case, like I had that situation in my head. I'm like, okay, I could see the finish line. I need to not do this. I need to keep playing patiently. The problem was right. the switch from Guile to Ryu. Uh, I played too patiently where now he's walking around for free. He's just kind of dancing all over me getting free sweeps, getting free uh, crouching lows, uh, cr- sorry, crouching forwards, um, yeah. and just dominating me. And one of the big situations, there, there's two big situations that happened. One was I had a finishing combo. I had a level two on deck, and I dropped it. I, I actually remember this very clearly where I, I'm on a hitbox. I'm strumming on down and back, but I think I like – tapped forward at one point just because i was like i'm gonna do level one no i'm gonna do level two and i'm just strumming uh-huh. rapidly and it, it, it only gave me quarter circle back punch which is an uppercut whips completely gave him the advantage and i dropped it that's mm. it's heartbreaking it really is i pulled the x button yeah. once again <laughs> <laughs> um do you guys know that uh there's there's tech out there to, to option select your supers Oh uh, my god! You, you basically do a Frankenstein motion, and then it's gonna t- it takes priority of whichever one you have the most meter for. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I remember hearing about something like that. Yeah, because they were just like do this, and then like yeah. What do you if mean you by have... a Frankenstein motion? So like for for Chun, like if you're like if I'm in the, I'm in the middle of doing a combo, and I'm not sure if I can build up enough bar to hit level three, it's double double back kick for level three, and for level two, it's double court uh, double forward kick. So mm-hmm. what you do is you do. I think you do like half circle back, quarter circle forward, quarter circle forward, half circle back, and then kick or punch, kick and kick and punch. I think, and then it'll it'll option select one of the two. For Is that me. an S and K motion? It's something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's it's, it's <laughs> weird. It's it's really difficult too. So it's not really that practical, um, un- <laughs> unless there's like a very specific situation where you're not sure what super you can do. Um, based on your, yeah. your current meter i mean to be frank like my whole situation like they definitely tightened up the window so maybe i i do i, I want to i wish i could see the inputs maybe it's deep in my enough in my computer i could go look hmm. into my inputs and see because <laughs> i want to just see where i messed up because they definitely tightened it to where you have less time to do the motion um yeah. so maybe i did do a pause i don't even remember it was such a blur so i do want to check it out <laughs> long story short though i did drop it that's the big point of that situation yeah. and then another situation where me and him uh i got the life lead we're both at like i maybe like 10 percent health he's at two percent or five percent whatever and we're coming down to the last 10 seconds and uh he he drive rush jab tick throw and then after that like i didn't tech it i i recall like attempted attack maybe i was a frame too late but uh, that was a rough situation. That was also a heartbreaker. Not as like as heartbreaking as dropping a combo because it was just it's down yeah, to the yeah. wire. Few seconds, but that definitely probably cracked me. Of like, damn, I had the life lead, and if I teched it, I would have had that victory. And you know, and a lot of things were like I couldn't even focus on the next match. And that's something I need to build as a player, as a to build my fortitude. Don't even worry about the last match. I need to worry about yeah. the current round. Um, yeah. But uh. I try you to know. just look at the bright side every time something like that happens and be like, well, at least I know what happened. Like I know what they're, what they're intent, like what they did yeah. last round. Yeah. Or like I, I can, wow. I can still use this as data for, for next round, even though I lost, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, that's, some, that's something I brought up before too, in terms of like, especially like in a tournament setting, right? Like you, you know, you have, if you're in winners, like, yeah, you have a, another match, right? Especially like if you get further into the tournament where you're like in the top three, like if you're in the winners finals, like you might be playing back to back, right? Those kind of mm-hmm. situations. Like otherwise, you're gonna hold up the tournament, and it's one of those things. Like in in um, in sports, like they talk about having like short term memory loss. Like yeah, you know this this quarterback just threw an interception, but you know what? You got to go back in the field, and now you got to go go make the game winning drive for us to go win the game. So get that out of your head, and it's time to move forward, and you know go do what you do, right? Or mm-hmm. you missed that you missed that three point shot the the possession before, but you know what 
we got a defensive stop and we got the ball back and you're still the man and we're still going to give you the ball and we want you to take that shot, right? So you got to be ready for it and not just be like, oh, you know what? I don't want this. Here, take the ball, Benny. And I'm just like, wait, but you're the shooter, right? Like, you're the guy. Like, why are you passing yep. the ball to me, right? Like, you don't want to, <laughs> you don't want to be in those kind of situations where you're gonna gotta pass it off. Like, you gotta have that, like you said, that that mental fortitude to be like, all right, I'm 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 still here. I'm still I'm still that guy. I'm still him, right? I'm I'm gonna go do this, you know, even though you had a, a bad situation, you know, two minutes ago, five minutes ago, whatever. I I I know that this sounds like a a little like cliche, but like. You know that that phrase. You, you, it's never over till it's over, right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Another exactly. way, like another way to like look at it and break it down, like an almost like logical, logical analysis, is that uh, from the time that the game starts and from the time that you have one HP left and you take your last hit, you are always capable of winning. Mm-hmm. Like you, at at no point during that entire situation can you not win. Now it gets harder and harder to to execute that really well, but it's yep. kind of like it's kind of like uh, in a card game when you have like your, your deck has like a specific strategy and you, you hit that win con and everything procs all of a sudden, or like yeah. in a in like a, a like team fight tactics or something where like you know your your build finally comes together at that point that certain point and you've just been taking losses on purpose and doing a loss streak in order to to build to that point right at any point you can pull the ripcord and and start to win and it's just if if you that to me makes makes everything feel better when like things don't go my way because i'm like there's always still a chance to win there's always still a path to to pick up after this this misstep and that misstep yeah. could be could be something beneficial down the line and that yeah. there's some data there you know yeah well i mean yeah it's funny you bring up like uh or i, I was gonna say talk about in terms of, you said team fight and i was just thinking of team games and it's just like oh yeah like you know in uh in games like you know Call of Duty, Overwatch, you know Valorant, whatever you want to have you right, where people are playing team games, it's like you know you can rely on teammates to to kind of help you come back. Or even you know if you have a miss, if I have a miscue and I miss my shot and I'm dead and it's you two remaining, right? I gotta rely on you guys, but you guys can still win for me, right? I can still still feel victorious vicariously through you guys, even if I if I did terribly. But in fighting games, you can't do that, right? It's just right. like mm-hmm. yeah, if you if you screw yourself. You're screw. You literally screw yourself, right? Like you, you have nobody to blame but yourself. You tech. If you didn't tech that throw, if you dropped your combo, that's on you. And that's something that I think is is I don't know. It's you know in the in the best of players, like you said, they have that mentality where they can always come back. That's that's how I look at it too. Because like I played with some of my friends where you know it's a one v five situation in Call of Duty, and people like immediately like. We're both dead, so like you know, we're we're in the whatever the the lobby chat talking to each other, and we're just like, "Well, this game's over." And I'm just like, "Wait, what? Like, what are you talking about?" I was like, "He still has a chance to come back." I was like, "You just kind of downplaying like his abilities already." Like, you know, that's where some of the best moments in gaming come from, right? Even in fighting games, it's like, "Oh, he's down the magic pixel." Oh, he parried this. Oh, he's got the he's coming back. The momentum shifted, right? Like yeah. those were those are some of the the biggest moments in in gaming are from those kind of situations and it's just like yeah i could steamroll somebody and get a perfect that's cool but it's just like if he steamrolls me but doesn't finish the job and i come back like people will look at that as like oh man like that was a much better situation than for you to just kind of walk through them i'd love to pick apart like the psychological reasoning for the it's over statement right because yeah. I agree, I've been there before, like in games, like I remember playing Halo in college or something just on Xbox yeah. Live with my friends, right? And it's like, what compels you to to resign? Uh, real yeah. truth, like, like, like fundamentally, like what what is what is the emotional catharsis that you actually get from acknowledging that it's over when it yeah. fundamentally isn't like we talked about that. There's always a chance to win, right? But what yeah. what are what is your like what 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 do people emotionally look looking for there? Are they just looking to move on to the next game? Are they looking to yeah. soften the blow from losing? You know, um, I think that there's a little bit like if you can figure out why you do that, that's a good way. Like I think that's the the recipe for figuring out how to prevent that from happening, to prevent yeah. you from resigning. Well, well, see, um, that's the the thing too in like fighting games. It's it, I think I mean, I'll give I'll give it to them in that sense because like in fighting games, it's a little different because other than the resources, right? Like your main resources is your, is your vitality is your life bar, right? Whereas like 
if we're down by 10 points and there's like a minute left in a basketball game, like, you know, most people are going to resign that this is over if we get like one more offensive possession and we don't score. Right. Like that I can right. understand. Right. OK. But, yeah, but, yeah. It's, but it's like game situation. But like there's been situations where me and my son were playing with my nephew, like we were playing Rocket League. Right. And you have three five minute quarters and yeah. the team put us down really quickly to like two zero. And like it's the first quarter or the first whatever the first it's not even a quarter because it's thirds right it's three rounds, the sure. first round or whatever you call it, and we're down two zero real quick and he's just like oh man this is over and I'm just like, bro like we're in the first round like we still have like twelve minutes of game time left like what are you talking about he goes oh no but they just, they're just so much better than us and I'm just like, is that your is that your mentality like already like to me I'm like okay we got we got a hill to climb but, you know this isn't insurmountable at at this point in the game. Like if it was at towards the end of the game with like 15 seconds left and yeah, sure. Resign at that point And like, you know, let's move on to the next thing. But I was like, we just started. Yeah. And that's like, it's, it's, we're not talking about like, you know, actually surrendering in the game and then playing for yeah. like calling a draw. We're actually talking about like the emotional impact of like, why does somebody emotionally resign like that early into the quarters? Right. Uh, yeah. Or the, the thirds. Uh, I, I don't know. Like, I mean, it's like it's like in this game of of, of Zangief drive rush SPD'd me at the start of the game. Like I'll be like, yeah. "Holy shit!" But I'm just like, "All right, well, this is over." Like that's not my that's not my thought process at all. It's just like, oh, "Okay, yeah. I got you." And then like you know, then I'll adjust like how I play because I'm just like, "Oh, he's presenting that he that he's willing to do this, right?" Like that yeah. to me, like that's a data point. That but raises more my... questions than 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 anything as opposed to like concluding the match. It's like, okay, is he going to keep doing it? Uh, yeah. Was he just trying to make a statement? Did he just burn a ton of meter on the ODSPD? Like, yeah. <laughs> does he know that he's not going to get a reward off? Like, what's his Oki after it? Are you going to show me all that on, on round one start? Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, there's there's all these, like, silver linings of getting hit by something random, I think. Um, again, it's to me, it's just having having that forever optimism outlook that yeah. well, there's I mean, always I something get, to like, learn from. That's, that's, that's just been me in general. Like, I'm typically a very positive and optimistic person and like to the point to where some people are just like you're not being very very uh, rational or you're not being very realistic and i was just like it's not that i don't think that those negative or bad things can happen it's just like i just don't choose to put my energy towards that right i don't put i don't i don't want to put my focus there because mm -hmm. it's not going to do me any good and like and uh like one of my favorite quotes is like um and I can't even think of it word for word, but it's basically like it's not always the strongest man that that ends up winning. Sometimes it's just the guy that thinks he can, right? And yeah. it's just like you know, you could have seven three matchup, uh, you know, Snake Eyes Geef versus versus Dalsim, but when he comes out on top, like you think his mentality was just like, man, Dalsim, I'm gonna lose again. Nah, he's probably complaining about float and all this other stuff, right? But when he wins, when he wins, like you know, you, you don't think he gets like a natural, natural high off of beating that tough matchup? Like you know, that's I'm sure his mentality is in this. You know, he probably he might have like a sigh, but it's just like he's not resorting to losing right off the bat. Yeah, it's it's tough too because in like in order to get that that high of winning a bad matchup, you have to like acknowledge that you have a bad matchup, um, yeah. and that's. You know, like that's been lighting up the Twitter sphere lately. I think um, that yeah. actually just to, to kind of lampshade it a little bit here is like this show. This this is like the show is called The Return because we haven't done a like a like I think the last episode that aired was like two weeks ago, but we recorded mm -hmm. that like another two weeks in advance. So we haven't talked in like a month. <laughs> yeah. Um, so like the Twitter verse has evolved quite a bit in the fighting game community. Uh, yeah other things like world events now everyone's talking like that's leaking into the fighting game community too and we have all kinds of opinions there that would get us canceled um but yeah. fundamentally like the thing I, I i notice is that people are complaining about so many different characters now and so many different matchups now and then the then the the, the social media ouroboros got back into it like it started eating <laughs> its own tail again and was like oh are you guys complaining about complaining complaining about complaining sucks too uh and like it it's I, I'm curious about like what your guys' thoughts are about just in general the state of Street Fighter VI, whether or not we should believe what we see in social media here, uh, if it's an actual like representation of the opinions of the fight, of the actual people playing the game. Uh, what's what are your guys' impressions of of all that? 
Yeah. And I was, well, I was going to say, I think a lot of that stemmed recently from, um, I want to say it was the, it was the Japanese uh, World Warrior event number five, where the grand yeah. finals was was uh, Nemo versus Fudo. And Fudo was playing DJ. Nemo was playing JP. And, yeah. you know, if you talk to anybody on, on Twitter, like pretty much like JP's like, you know, in the top three, you know, some people are just like, he's, he's definitely number one. He plays a different game than everybody else, but he's in the top three, right? DJ's yeah. kind of hovered in that kind of top five range from the beginning of the game up until now. People don't don't exactly know where to place him. And Fudo basically did like a speed run. Like I went to go look for that match because Scott had, Scott had uh, talked about it. And I was looking on YouTube and like, you know, you have those people that, that curate the stuff from CFN and like, you know, put it on their channel. And I was looking at it and I was like, this match is only like four minutes and 15 seconds. Like this can't be it. Let me find like the official stream. Right. Mm -hmm. So like I found like one of the official, well, not the official stream. I found somebody that I guess recorded the stream and posted it or whatever. Ooh, and then I, you know, content I thieves. Off. I, yeah, content thieves. There you go. Vultures. Oh, no. Yeah. So I moved all the way, I, whatever. I just found it. Right. And I was just like, okay, this is the, this is the stream. I, I had, I moved all the way up to the grand finals. When I watched the set and I was just like, oh damn, that was four minutes. And I was like, holy shit. I was just like, you know, here I was thinking that it it couldn't have been that quick, but that's sure enough what it was. And then the aftermath of aftermath of that was, oh man, DJ's DJ's top top whatever, right? <laughs> and it was just like, what? I was like, a week ago you guys were kind of like debating where he was at, but because like he goes in here and just dominates dominates Nemo's JP, now all of a sudden like he's being pushed to the forefront. So I think in Overall, in social media, I think a lot of that stuff is way over amplified. And then the other thing you have, especially with Twitter, is you have this thing where the influencers and the negativity sells. Like the engagement literally pays people at this yes. point. So yeah. it's just like, I'm not going to get a lot of engagement if I'm like, yeah, DJ's an honest character, blah, blah, blah. Or maybe I would. I guess maybe that's a kind of a negative way to look at him. But uh, you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get I'm not getting a lot of get a get a lot of engagement, you know, having a having yeah. a rational point of view, right? I've got to throw something out there that's super polarizing and just say DJ's overpowered and he just presses buttons and he does this and he does 30% damage with three bars or whatever. And I'm just like, you know, I gotta get people to 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 engage with me. And yeah. I think that's I think that's kind of where a lot of this stems from is like you have the people that want that engagement and are willing to kind of just throw themselves out there and be that person that's going to get quote tweeted and just like, what are you talking about? Like, this is nonsense. Like, you know, and get those people to, to start talking. Yep. I agree. I, uh, I think that there's just so much, so much in, in having that. Cause like, in, in the old days, for sure, you can, right? Or even on Facebook, even. Um, you know, arguments happened on the internet constantly. Like, sure, you can wasn't known. Sure, you can like, never. Like, really <laughs> well. Yeah, it was just people were assholes to each other then, too. But I think the difference is that at least it was they were, people were genuine assholes about it. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, oh, this is this, this is really who he is. That's just that's just who so and so is, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, 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 and it wasn't like, hey, this opinion may or may not be magnified because he bent, they benefit from magnifying it. You know, like yeah. the, the most you were figuring out was post count or something um, yeah. like that. Like, so <laughs> I, and then it's, it's not even like now, not, not only is there a metric for it of like engagement and followers and stuff like that, but now, yeah, now there's money involved too. And it's like, you know, I, a lot of people I think are, are going to be willing to, 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 dip dip into that negative area i think uh to get some kind of engagement and i think that really harms the balance discussion now to be clear everyone is still hyperbolic about balance that's just like human nature like everyone says this this character is the best i just i haven't seen it travel this quickly before like even yeah. for five like people weren't people didn't jump fr from character to character once a week like every week crying about them you know uh yeah. characters weren't memes <laughs> <laughs> i don't remember too much about five but like with six now having like really good net play and we're having like four to five online tournaments a week i'm wondering is that the factor of like why people are so loud about it now 
Um, Cause I mean, Twitter mm-hmm. existed, Facebook existed back when five happened, but we only really waited for majors. There were definitely more majors at that time, but ah. uh, being that that's we it. have so many online events now, it, maybe that's why it's more expressive. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that, that brings up a good point. Cause now you have that, that, um, that quantified, quantified data, right? Is that the right word? <laughs> yeah. Can't even, can't even speak Known correct, quantity. Correct, but yeah. But you have the, but you have the data, right? From the online tournaments that you could look at and be like, well, so-and-so's won this, you know, this many tournaments, right? With the online thing. Or like you said, you know, we, d- we didn't have that before. It was just like, you know, yeah, we had locals, but I mean, that's not, a lot of people wouldn't look at locals as like a true testament as like, who would characters what, right? It was just like, how did, how did these, the top players fare out at, at CEO, at, at a final round, at East Coast Throwdown, at Evo, you know, and they would, you know, that's, that would be your next kind of stepping point. Oh, yeah. this new tech came out for this character that we hadn't seen at the last major. Okay, it might be time to kind of move them up in the, the, the tier discussion, right? But like Maynard said, like, you know, we got Tampa Never Sleeps every week. We got all these other other tournaments that are happening that can feature all these play all these top players regularly now because of the the net code. And yeah, so I mean I could definitely see that uh as a as a big point of discussion just because you have you know the, the data online in, in start GG or wherever it's at for people to look at and be like, well, yeah, I think somebody put in together I saw a tweet or something in terms of like DJ being like the second, the one that's won the the second most World Warrior events. I think that's what it was. Ken, I believe. Yeah, I think Ken was first. I think, and then <laughs> Ken was first. So, and you know, nobody had any any anything to say about that because they were like, yeah, Ken's the best, whatever. But then it was like the, the character that's won the second most World Warrior events is DJ. Did you know that? And I'm just like, what? I was like, I didn't know that. That. I don't know, man. That that also just strikes me as like a clickbait thing. Like that's that's I mean, a, that's yeah. a relative tr- new trend for tr- not relative, but like ever since <laughs> the pandemic, really. Like numbers and statisticians and stuff like to throw those out there. Like, should we even really be using tournament results realistically to determine tiers right now? Like, like I I I, I wonder if we're at a like we're we're less than six months into the game, and so yeah, like yeah. there's yeah. like I I get like the elephant in the room here is that we f- people figure out games faster now right yeah. so it's not it's not going to be like you know two years of of uh one version of street fighter 3 and then we figured it out after you know after another five years or how some of those older games are still evolving right like yeah. this game has had so many eyes on it and so many people looking at it for five months since launch the current state of the game and then you know several other months in advance with the, the closed beta tests and yeah. so it's like is the game figured out? And I don't, I don't know. Um, I, don't, I don't think it's figured out, but I, I think the reason that like, I don't know if this may be a hot take, but the fact that like a lot of people are using these tier lists as, as kind of like weapons is because they don't, they're not the high competitive players that like actually f- see how the game is played or see how, like why things are working they just see results and they're trying to use these results mm-hmm. as these weapons to tier list things and to prove a point if anything yeah and then if yeah. anything like maybe as casual players who are watching they are tired of seeing ken and dj and that's why they're making this big fuss because they don't want to see these characters anymore in the casual perspective they don't want to spectate these guys yeah. <laughs> so they're causing discourse which affects competitive players because yeah. maybe like i don't agree that dj is the biggest threat he i do think he has some weaknesses but he is a, a great character but he's yeah. he's not the number two as some people may have put it yeah no, so i mean yeah i don't i don't take necessarily tournament results as like when i think of like tears and stuff like that right you know i i have to look at the game look at the character like you know what that character has and how how they play within the confines of the game and that's how I would that's that's how I would come about with a tier list. I'm not gonna look at tournament results and be like, oh, you know, Ryu won the last eight tournaments that I've watched. I was just like Ryu's the best character in the game because I'm just like, you know, I don't think anybody in the world would say Ryu's the best character in the game. But if <laughs> you know, I just happen to pick a certain number, a certain series of tournaments, and I see Ryu winning, like, you know, I can't, you know, I wouldn't I don't think I'd come to that conclusion. I think one factor too that a lot of people don't put into in these tier lists is 
the players behind them. Um, mm -hmm. So like Fudo, great player since I, I don't even know how long. Yeah. Yeah. Like even virtual before fighter. that, like virtual yeah. fighter. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, fighter. <laughs> he was a monster yeah. there. And people were like, oh, he came out of nowhere in Street Fighter 4. No, he's been playing fighting games for a long time. He has the fundamentals yeah. that's needed. And he has the understanding of those types of things. So um, he is a great DJ. Um, but like, it shouldn't be that like, it's what's pushing DJ higher on the list. They got to also recognize the players that are behind these characters. Like the funny thing is like the only one that I see that gets recognized for the player instead of the character is Zangief's, uh, sorry, Snake Eyes is Zangief. That's the yeah. only one that gets the exception, but everyone <laughs> else is just canon JPs, DJs. And... Yeah. yeah. yeah speaking of Geef, like they recently yeah. published uh, some data about matchup, uh, like a, like a big matchup uh, grid of like, mm -hmm every player every match that has occurred over 1750 mr and it's like there's stuff like uh you know chung lee loses to zangief uh in those matches and then if you look at the sample size it's like 380 matches and yeah. to humble brag a little bit i'm i'm in those matches and i've gotten fucked by geefs before and that doesn't mean <laughs> that i know the matchup i also know that uh chung like i feel very confident in that matchup because Zangief has to work really hard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I know. I know that guy's working harder than I am. So, like, the even the matchup data, like this early in the game, the sample sizes are so small. Oftentimes, because people are arbitrarily setting it on MR, like seventeen fifty and above. Well, you know, someone who has sixteen hundred MR might also have a, a better understanding of the matchup than someone like me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and, and so it's like there's no reliable form of data i think to actually prove out these tier lists there is definitely like a feeling like we know ken and jp and probably luke are top three right but yeah. like are they are they like this you know ruining the game kind of thing like i feel yeah. like there's a top three in every game that we ever talk about <laughs> yeah yeah like i don't I feel mean... like they're third strike chun at this point <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i mean I, you know i'll admit like i've had the, the 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 most troubling matchups that I've had personally have been basically Ken, Luke, and Cammy as a sim player, and like I throw I throw DJ in there too just because I run into that character a lot. Of of all the characters, I feel like that's probably the one other than Ken that I've run into the most. Like I don't I really know. If don't I don't like fighting DJ. By the I'd way. have that to look at my data, sucks. but I was like, I'm I'm pretty sure <laughs> that that's in those are probably like my top four like most most played and and toughest matchups, yeah. and. It's just one of those things where like as the game has developed, as I've as I've gotten better, like yeah, I I I understand the strength of those characters, but then you know, I also understand like how to deal with those characters better. So I'm winning more against them. So it's just like, you know, sure, I'm sure as I climb the ranks further, like I'm gonna end up running into the people that are that are even better. But you know, you like I don't know, I've always found found that that part of fighting games to be the most fun is just like overcoming those kind of things like in street fighter 4 sagat was you know vanilla sagat was like our you know without without a doubt like the best character right just in terms of damage output like he was just up there and you know i think second at the time would probably be like ryu what with the stuff that he had maybe but Sagat was pretty much clearly like vanilla, you know, that's what he's known as vanilla Sagat, right? Like, you know, you don't talk about super Sagat or AE Sagat. It was like, no, vanilla Sagat was that dude, right? But like, you get, like, for me, like, I get used to playing those kind of matches and I get comfortable in them. So, like, even though they're disadvantageous for me, like, I'm okay with that because I have familiar, familiarity with it and I'm comfortable with it. That's, Whereas, that's... like, if somebody played, whatever again i'd be like okay honda wins this easily but i was just like i've seen like two gens in my whole life and i might just get steamrolled that doesn't mean anything right that's a really strong point i think that people will take matchup knowledge like matchup numbers and then apply them to a matchup that they don't know or they haven't put the time into learning yet and so personal experience always trumps whatever the global matchup knowledge is um and stylistic too like i i have a problem with shotos like i don't i don't play well against shotos um like, like john doesn't chun li destroys shotos <laughs> so yeah. like it, it's 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 like this weird mix of like i can't play this character to the, their strengths completely because i have a like i, I as a player have a mental block against that yeah. but the, that doesn't mean i'm going to go on the internet and say chun li loses to shotos because i do 
Um, that's <laughs> exactly. arrogant if anything right yeah, yeah or, or, or it's like or it's like Maynard I was gonna say like he trains with Ghidorah all the time and plays Blanca maybe he plays like one of the best Blancas in the world and like he's not phased by it because like he said like he's been playing against that character a lot he understands a lot of the stuff that the character does and you know, maybe he goes and beats that person and somebody's like well who the hell's this or I just got Marissa right and they're just like no you didn't get Marissa like I just know the matchup better than like the normal person does because I play it all the time if I if I if there was a matchup and one person had advantage six four, but the person at disadvantage knew the matchup and the person that had the advantage doesn't know it, I'd still bet on the the yep. the underdog. Yeah. What um, were you gonna say, Manu? Sorry. I coming off of John's comment about the Shoto's and Chun Li, I was speaking with Freezy about it because Freezy mm -hmm. picking up Chun Li within the last month was uh, learning like the matchup. He's been watching a lot of YouTube videos and looking at the research and good for him. But he was like. Every time he finds a video that talks about the Ryu Chun Li matchup, they are just like, "Yeah, Chun beats Ryu. Cool. Yep. That's the discussion." Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and we learn nothing else. Yep. There's yeah. a lot of people that at at launch. There's a lot of people that said that about Chun. Oh, she's really good. She's just really hard to play, and then that's it. They don't know shit, yeah. and they're like, "Oh, she has a DP, so she's probably good." Um, yeah. Yeah, because I like people say Chun beats Ken. I don't think that's true anymore. Um, Chun definitely doesn't beat JP. Like, and then people say that Blanca beats Chun too, and I'm like, I don't. I actually don't feel that. Um, but I don't know. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so that's the kicker. Is like, if we don't know, then why are we like? I don't know. Why are we pushing for balance changes? Which is, yeah, yeah. You know, everyone's talking about having a balance patch right now, or wanting yeah. one, or. And I don't need, like, is the game ready for a balance patch in your guys' eyes? Uh, I like the idea of waiting for the year. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I mean, I do too. I mean, I just, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of kind of like the, the constant change, especially in fighting games. Like, um, like, you know, I played Fortnite a few years ago and like, I think we've talked about this before. Like they were changing things like every Tuesday, every week. And mm. to me, it was just frustrating because like, if I liked something, if I liked a certain weapon or something, like the next week they'd be like, oh, we toned this down. And I'm just like, I like using that thing, but now it sucks. Like, I don't want to use it anymore. I'm putting myself at a disadvantage, right? Or maybe the next week they just remove it all together and they're just like, hey, we're putting this in instead. And I'm just like, that was my favorite gun. And like, you know, are you guys just removed Dawson <laughs> from the game because people were bitching about it? Like, what? I was just like, you know, that's 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 how I would look at it. Oh, you took away his his comet fireball because people didn't want you know he shouldn't have two fireballs on the screen or something i'm just like what i was just like learn to deal with it and find ways around it like like i don't think i'm perfectly fine with the, with the kind of yearly updates and then the quarterly kind of like with little tuning that they've been doing because they, they sure. they've, they've done that like i'm not i'm not a fan of the big sweeping changes happening regularly because like um i don't know if you guys follow mk1 at all but uh i guess their first major tournament that uh that sonic Fox, sonic Fox won like I, I i haven't been following the game at all but i tuned into the stream a little bit and all i saw was cyrax doing this like helicopter move that was like putting people in like pressure situations and you know i guess whatever take your guess you're in the blender kind of thing right now and i'm just like this looks really kind of boring and like the the, the type person that he was playing with is using the same character and it's like oh my turn here's cyrax doing the, the freaking lariat here and i'm just like Okay, and then after that event was over, they nerfed them, and now they're just like, "Oh well, now I'm not going to use this 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 uh, cameo anymore because it's been nerfed." And like, why did you guys do this? There was a lot of people that were upset about that, and then there's the other half that was like, "Oh man, I'm glad they fixed that because that's all you were seeing all the time was Cyrax coming in and and doing his doing his thing." So sure. now it's like it's kind of flipped the whole game on its head because people are like. Well, this this cameo is not viable anymore. I got to go find a different combination of stuff, and like I don't want to have to deal with that every every couple months. That is something to be said. Is like a lot of the assist based games, the ones that like have team chemistry and are impacted a lot by those kinds of like minuscule changes, like Dragon Ball mm -hmm. and Marvel. Like a lot of them didn't really have like a monthly balance patch thing. And I, I get it from the MK1 standpoint. The game just came out, so they might be hot fixing some stuff and they don't, you know, they might want to, they might be wanting to try to steer the trajectory of the game organic, like how, where it goes out of, out of the gates because, you know, this is where sales are going to be the highest, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but I, 
they're always the one that step in it in RS, really. <laughs> they're yeah. always the ones that step in it on these on these balance patch things. So you guys feel that and then we shouldn't like uh, six should not be patched any, anytime soon then, huh? Only yeah, bugs. Not, not, yeah, not any major things. I mean, like I said, like when they did, I think Aki, they did kind of some minor things here and there that mm -hmm. were that were kind of changed, but it wasn't anything kind of like sweeping like frame data changes or anything like that. It was like, you know, we changed this situation where this was happening or like, like I think Dawson had a weird bug where his like level two would like disappear. And then it would like appear at the last second before it like hit yeah. the ground, and people yeah, were like, "What the hell's like? What the hell's that?" <laughs> <laughs> you need so that, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I, I I'm perfectly fine with stuff like that. Like, yeah, sweeping changes. Like, I don't really care for that. Um, but one thing I wanted to to go back to was like Maynard was talking about the the kind of discourse or the the negativity from the spectators, right? From seeing those yeah. kind of top characters all the time, right? Like seeing Ken seeing seeing dj or seeing luke or whatever jp or like i said talking about mk like you were seeing cyrex everywhere and it's just like for me like i feel like that's just something like if you're gonna tune in to to not just fighting games just esports in general or any kind of competitive thing you better get used to seeing the characters that are the top right like if if this character in overwatch is like the best healer you're going to see that character all the time. It doesn't matter, right? If there's three, if there's four different healers and this is the best one, you're going to see that one all the time, right? If this is the best tank, you're going to see that tank all the time instead of the other ones because they're that much better. And mm -hmm. it's the same thing with like fighting games. If Ken is, Ken is arguably better or without a doubt better than Ryu, you're going to see a lot of Ken. That and like, you know, he's a legacy character. People have been playing Ken for 30 years. So it's just like, if they're like, I play Ken and Ken's really good in this game, guess what? you're going to see a lot of him. Right. <laughs> and that's just, yeah. that's just kind of the way that it's going to be. And it's just like, yeah, it can get kind of stale. Like I think, cause my first Evo I went to was, um, 2011, that was AE. Right. And that was the year of Yun and Fei Long. And I remember watching that like top 32 or whatever and seeing Fei Long from like every match. And I'm like, we had a thing going on with one of our friends there that played Fei Long and we, we called him Mr. Nine one. Because he was just like, all of his matchups are 9-1, right? Because he was so good. <laughs> <laughs> we even trolled him, like, because we made, like, Evo shirts at the time. And, like, we put on the back of his shirt, it was, like, it was typically supposed to be, like, our gamer tag and then, like, the character. And, like, I think we put the gamer tag. And then we put, like, Mago, I think, who was, like, the best Fei Long at the time or something on his shirt. <laughs> 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 but it's just, like, you know, if that's if that's one of the best characters in the game, like, you better get used to to, to seeing them because that's just, that's just how it's going to be. And, like... I don't think anything like that warrants a patch just because it's like, well, I'm tired of seeing them. I was like, okay, well, other people got to step it up then. Yeah. I should also disclaimer, like a lot of that discourse that I, I brought up, like I, I did see it once or twice on Twitter, probably not as often because the games that I do come from, that's where I did see it most frequently, League of Legends and Team Fight Tactics. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, I just wanted to disclaim that. Like, I think it's more just the bigger esports scenes uh i did see it like i said once or twice in street fighter but not as much so maybe maybe it's a little bit better here uh in, in fighting games comparably but yeah that i, I, you I know feel what? like we're we're primarily focusing on like the or like what i'm seeing us like dancing around here at least is the the topic of uh disconnects between competitive versus spectator play competitive spirit versus mm -hmm. spectator play and that doesn't seem like that problem is not one that's easily solved, and that problem is a, like a universal problem, and not just esports, but like everything. No, <laughs> like, no, yeah, that's, like professional that's sports too. Yeah. Like May Mayweather yeah. is a good example. We talked about him on a podcast episode a long time ago, right? Yeah. Like he's not interesting to watch, and so like the view number of views go down, like the eyeballs that go in, the, in his matches are go down because of that, right? But the yeah, people yeah. that really appreciate that shit, like really appreciate the technique and you know, playing for points like that, like they love it. So yeah. it's it, 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 catering to those different audiences. I think it's going to, it's, it's always been a problem for us. So you just talked about an example in street fighter four, you know, we had one in, I can think of one for remember Superman ran injustice for a little bit <laughs> or everyone yeah. hated on Mora doom and Marvel or like, like every there's always or Phoenix, right? There's always like yeah. this villain character uh, to the point where even young was designed as a villain character. Right. Um, yeah. So, like, at what point do we cater 
as as you say, like should we be catering to spectators for who are crying because they've seen seen the same things yeah. many times? Well, it, I, I love that you brought up Phoenix because like Phoenix is like the perfect example of what I like to see from the scene because like yeah, Phoenix was strong and like everybody was like, oh man, they're building up to level five and like you know, oh the snapback and killing her didn't work. They were able to escape right, but then what grew out of that right? It was a lot of anti Phoenix tech. It was like, how yeah. the hell do I deal with this character? Right? This is a part of the game, and like, you know, I don't think anybody would really argue that she was not really balanced because, like, she had like the lowest health in the game, right? Like, you could kill her without really spending, you know, spending a bar, like if that, yeah. right? She had no health, right? And it's just like she had that condition where you had to build up the five meter, and she had to be your anchor. So you had to play a very specific way to get her to her OP status, as people would say, right? to get to dark yep. phoenix but again like what's what grew from that was people f- wanting to figure out how to deal with this whether it was like you know one of the the, the hypest moments was that that final round um i forgot the, the japanese player's name that was playing frank west and basically broke the oh, stream Kusuru? yeah because yeah, yeah frank west and like a uh, rocket raccoon right wasn't that the team yeah. and somebody else yeah and like beautiful joe yeah. yeah and he did you know he did the like the the invincible roller whatever into the super and it caught phoenix and like you can go find that clip and like the commentators the stream is basically like breaks at that point and like, all the sound like cuts out and everybody's like holy shit blah 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 you know everything's just going <laughs> nuts and it's just like that's the kind of moment that comes from those kind of situations like when you see you know that that dire situation or that that uh that overpowering situation that you're worried about and you see somebody overcome that in a way with some cool tech like that's the kind of stuff that gets people hype like people people will think about that for the rest of the time of the game you know yeah. uh the history of the game and and further on than to think like oh man this guy won so many tournaments yeah but you remember that one time that frank west did this to him like you know people will remember that you're talking about a, you're talking about storylines essentially yeah, like, yeah. that seems people, to, be, yeah, to resonate with you quite a bit is is like the, not even necessarily a storylines between the players, but just the game telling the story and the character balance. And the, like, that's like, that's a, an interesting one because that's also like a flashpoint in time. Like mm-hmm. we're only going to have this balance, like this version of the game this year. Right. And so any of those narratives or those triumphs over villain characters like JP or Ken, you know, those might go away next year. Yeah. Um, so like, it, it it's going to be an interesting way how this game is balanced because we could we could have a lot of those narratives that you were mentioning be created artificially or we could st- like uh stymie them or or cut them off before uh they have a chance to organically grow i guess yeah. like even in, even in the year year to year balance truly like i think that um there's probably characters that are unexplored right now, just like there were in, in Street Fighter 4. Everyone talked about Vanilla Akuma or Vanilla Seth, right? Mm-hmm. Or um, Chun Li in, in Marvel 3. How oh, she man, took vanilla, a couple vanilla years. Vanilla Seth to... would have been a problem, dude. It had a Yoga Sniper <laughs> and all that damage. And like, yeah. the, the only downside was like the. He was a glass cannon, as they say. Like, he had no health. But like, man, if, if they would have gave that game like another year or two, oh, man, I think, yeah, he could have easily been the top character in that game. Yep, and Street Fighter Five, people were sleeping on Vega or Claw specifically in season one. I think, um, like, there's a lot of a lot of like organic balance that could come by holding back. But at the same time, you have everybody on the internet crying right now about <laughs> <laughs> wanting to wanting a patch. So, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I think that's that's gonna be the biggest. I don't know the. The biggest point of interest is going to come, yeah, What what is it going to be next? Probably May or June, possibly, like, with the patch or after Capcom Cup? Because Capcom Cup is, what, March? Well, Something like that. They did announce that recently. I think also Akuma is also coming out around the summer of next... The summer? I didn't think it was that late. Summer. I thought it was going to be probably, before March. It's spring, probably right? all spring, yeah. yeah. But I think it definitely has to happen after the Capcom Cup, for sure. Yeah. I thought... Akuma was coming after that, but I, I, I could be wrong. Yeah, I feel like I don't know. I feel like Ed's gonna come like early December, and then we might see. I don't know if we're, we'll see Akuma right before Capcom Cup, but I mean, I wouldn't put that past them either because they released Rashid like what two weeks before Evo, and everybody was like, "Oh man, Rashid's gonna win Evo!" Yeah. Right? So I mean, who knows? <laughs> they might be like, you know what? Here's Akuma, because I feel like at Capcom Cup they might want to promote like season two at that point, right? 
Like, here's That's a Puma for, for a month or whatever. And then it's like Capcom Cup. Okay, see what you guys got. You know, can Akuma come through and just kind of win with short notice? Or are people going to, you know, kind of go back to their JPs and Kens right now until afterwards? And then, you know, maybe they do like an announcement for season two at that point. Speaking of Capcom Cup, one of the things that uh, was announced recently was the schedule for it. And my understanding is it's like yeah. a week long. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't get that at all. I mean, the last chance qualifier, I think is like four days. And I'm like, yeah. I understand like you probably want a lot of that streamed or I don't know how they're going to have that set up, but I'm just like four days for a last chance qualifier is, is absurd to me. Cause I'm like, typically, I guess in the past, like what it's been, it's been like a weekend, right? Like Friday would be like the last chance qualifier. And then we'd have Saturday up to whatever top eight. And then Sunday's top eight, right? Like it's like typical three-day tournament uh, planning, I guess. And yep. now you're like, you want to do like a four-day last chance qualifier? Like a lot of people that would want, that could probably normally attend for a weekend, you know, now you're going to ask them to take off like a week from work or whatnot? Like, what the heck? <laughs> for yeah. a chance to get and in? And do like, they believe that much in winning the, the mill? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like if you're not qualified already, like, yeah, that sucks. But I mean, more power to you if you can. It's just like, man, that's a long time to... To even just be a, a last chance qualifier, that's crazy to me. Hopefully your work understands after the first two days that hey, I need two more days off. <laughs> <laughs> I, well that like, that actually happened to Chris Deterian in the Street Fighter Five for the LCQ. He made top eight, but he didn't think he was going to, and then he just didn't show up for it because he had work. Yeah, yeah see, oh, see, but see, I don't know. That, yeah. that that brings up a whole kind of different situation because like you know, some people are like, Well, if you were gonna make top eight, you, you should have beat him anyway, right? And then the other part is just like well, now he's kind of ruined the integrity of the event. But I was just like, I don't know. I'm on I'm on more of the side where it's just like if you don't if you know you couldn't make it towards the end, like I wouldn't participate personally. Like I'm just like I mean I, I did that myself with when it came to one of like the invitational things that Abe did in the past, right? Like I I knew I couldn't make it to this, so why am I going to play in the qualifier? Or the qualifier, sure. as we called it, right? <laughs> why am I going to play in this? Because if I win this and I advance. I can't play in this anyway, and you gotta go. You guys gotta go find, you know, that second place takeover or whatever. Like that, I didn't. I didn't feel that that was fair. I think by and large, the response has been kind of what what, what yours was, Benny, and that everyone's like, "What the hell? This is too long for it. Not good for the players." Um, mm -hmm. But I do, I do think it's worth like calling out a potential, like a weird irony that I see here, and that everyone is right now, uh, like again, it's in the month since we've last taped an episode, like. People were complaining about how there weren't en enough offline events and how it was dying because online events were, you know, smothering everything. And Capcom needed another offline event uh, that wasn't that France one, right? Or yeah. like we we want we want our regional majors back. Essentially, that's what people are asking for. And then they're like, okay, well, here's a tournament that's a week long, and everyone's like, oh, that's too much tournament. <laughs> like, I, I I get it. It's a false equivalency. Like they are fundamentally different things, and the points are valid. But it is like, do we want too many? Do we want too many tournaments or do you want too little tournament and, and yeah. it's like no it, it's got to be like like goldilocks like it's got to be specifically on a weekend <laughs> it's got to be less than three days you know <laughs> and it's got to be not on the same day that another online tournament is or another offline tournament is all the japanese have to fly over to america for it like there's all these like weird criteria now that, that i think the expectations are, are getting kind of out of whack <laughs> yeah it's not a, like i'm trying to even remember like but besides evo is there any other southwest tournaments like nah. we lost norcal regionals we lost socal regionals yeah texas in terms of texas in terms showdown, of the southwest the yeah texas well, i mean it's not southwest but i mean texas showdown is probably the closest thing that we have to us <laughs> yeah to us yeah because i mean yeah texas, I don't know. Just... texas isn't southwest because they don't like because they consider themselves like their own region <laughs> yeah i'm not even talking about the texas seat i'm just talking about the state they think yeah. they're their own. They're, they're, they think they're their own country. <laughs> I mean, they kind of are. It's like Alaska. I mean, you wouldn't. I mean, people would be like, "Oh yeah, it's the Northwest." When you think of the North, the Pacific Northwest, or whatever, you think of Washington and Seattle, right? Or Washington yeah. and, uh, and Oregon, right? Those kind of areas. You know, you wouldn't be like, "Oh yeah, we're going to include Alaska too." Like, no, that's that's a whole other thing. You know. Yeah, we just don't think about Alaska though. Or, so, Texas, or to some people, it's in the it's in the middle <laughs> of the ocean, like off to the southwest. You know, if you were looking at a map. <laughs> no. I thought it was just it Canada up there. <laughs> <laughs> That's what uh, the other thing I wanted to go back to was you were talking about like 
or we've been talking about just in terms of like the the characters that you see at the at the major tournaments right and the character variety like you see ken's yeah. in the top tiers right yeah and like i was gonna say if you want to see character variety maybe tune into more of these like local streams like yeah maybe they're not you know they're not filled with like the top players and you know all that kind of stuff but i mean you'll get you can get a lot more character variety i mean ours our top eight was like kyle ryu we had a dj two djs uh another ryu we had two Chun djs Lee. oh man djs winning yeah. everything now <laughs> we had a chun lee we had we had my sim in there tied for seventh we had a jp and we had a marissa dang you put marissa last <laughs> yeah i don't know i was just looking at it i wasn't even like going I'm through teasing, the order yeah. <laughs> but you know they're like maybe tune into your locals like i mean i know i've done that occasionally just look kind of looking at the streams just because like you want to see i want to see different characters like it's cool seeing the top players play but it's just like okay it's ken and ken and cammy again or it's ken and luke and i'm like great <laughs> that's a really good point like if you're a spectator and you want some variety it's not like the variety isn't there it's just not the one that you are deliberately this deliberately being catered or marketed towards you right you have to go mm -hmm. find it um yeah. i was thinking about that today too like as far as i don't know why this popped into my head i think it was had something to do with our discord conversation but like um who is the most commonly played char character in arizona right now mm. like, are you i think is it still <laughs> Ryu? i don't know if it's still Ryu. i don't know i'd probably say dj DJ? I guess so. I yeah, know. there's a lot of like people that I don't know that play DJ, but uh, well, at the moment I I'm, on my radar are Scott and Marvin. Yeah, um, and we had Chad Walk that that made uh top 8 also. Yeah, and Hammy won, won, won an event for it a long time ago too, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, I, mean, I don't know. I'm, I mean, I'd have to look at the results. You guys, I mean, you guys have been more involved in the other tournaments. So I don't know what's going on in Tucson. I know I know Sims not represented well in our tournaments. I mean, Akita's uh, yeah, Akita's, in, Akita's here, right but he's but he's not he's online. He hasn't Correct, been yeah. He hasn't I been have, to any offline tournaments that I know of here. But he, he's uh, made top eight at, in World Warrior tournaments. Yeah. So that's that's worth like like uh, commendation for it, truly. Oh yeah, Super yeah, for awesome. sure. Yeah. Like yeah, he's yeah. he's definitely like the the top the top sim player in our state for sure. And uh, I haven't seen swoops in a while and HKS. HKS came out once and I was really hyped to see him in person and I was hoping he comes out more. I don't I know if you listen to this podcast, yeah. but I hope you do come out more. Didn't they get sucked into MK1? Because that's what that's what it seemed like Soups was more interested in was MK1. A lot of I know people are, I think, yeah. HKS was initially an NRS guy. And I was asking, yeah. him, hey, do you think you're going to leave when one comes out? I was like, no, I don't think so. And I haven't seen him since. <laughs> Heartbreaker, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what happens. Maybe those guys will come back. Maybe they won't. But yeah. that that yeah. that is the other thing is we are kind of like – the i think that was was a social media topic as well uh, during our break was that everyone was talking about is the honeymoon phase over right uh, for this game <laughs> and I, that i think opened the floodgates for well if it's over then that means i can start complaining <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> all these like frustrations that i want to air like i think that's what people like in it again the game hasn't actually been out more than six months i think that it's really worth like calling that calling attention to that <laughs> yeah well i mean my biggest thing is like like I said, I think that there's a lot of people that are playing this game. I, I mean, at least from the top player perspective, because of that million dollars in Capcom Cup, right? Like, there, if, if you're in that upper echelon of players, that's that's an opportunity that doesn't come around often. So I can understand those guys somewhat being forced to play, especially if they're sponsored or feeling obligated to play because of that opportunity. For everybody else, like you know, if you don't even have a shot at that, like. Go play something else. Like, why are you constantly complaining? I don't care if Street Fighter is your game or your main game or whatever, but like, you can play other things. Like, there's nothing stopping you from being like, you know what? I don't like this game. I don't like the direction it's 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 going in, and just to play something else. And I, this is near identical to to what happened when Street Fighter Five launched, and like. What happened was everybody started complaining about it, and a lot of people, myself included, liked the game. So we were like, "Shut the fuck up! You don't know anything. It's too early." And then they were yeah. like, "Hey, I have legitimate concerns, and I care about yeah. this game too." And then that's the exact same thing that's happening here. The counterplay, the counterplay is that it's always like, "Well, I'm trying to air my concerns," and that's yeah. not necessarily uh, untrue. It's just that 
why don't we why do we always do the same song and dance yeah <laughs> that or, wow. i mean or, or your counterpoint now is like it's still too early <laughs> yeah but, but no it's like um i don't know i i just don't understand like why like it it kind of leads to this whole kind of like snowball kind of dog pile effect with they wait for like you said they wait for somebody to say something right yeah. And then whether it's a top player or influencer or something, and then people will latch onto that and be like, well, so-and-so said this, you know? So, yep. you know, finally I found somebody that's in agreement with me and I feel like now's the perfect time for me to speak up about this. And I'm just like, whatever, man, just, culture. just, just play what you want. Play, play, <laughs> what, play what's fun for you. Like I'm having a ton of fun. I'm losing in the process, but like at the same time, like there's a lot of growth and a lot of Im- improvement and stuff that I see for myself personally. So I was like, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm having, I've put in a, I don't know, according to Steam, like almost 600 hours in this game. Well, I, part of that's like, I don't know, maybe 30 of that's my son, but it's like still, I put in like 500 plus hours in this game and I'm having a ton of fun. So I was like, you, you, you won't hear a lot of negativity from me at all. I mean, you'll see me vent and this and that about Camry having such a sick neutral and all this <laughs> other stuff. But, you know, that's, that's all kind of just, you know, what are just venting and, just in jest, but you know, I'm, I'm willing to, to work and kind of, you know, get over that hill and uh, get over that hump and overcome that kind of stuff more than just be like, you know what, Cammy's killing my enjoyment for this game. I'm done. Like, nah, I'm going to beat you guys. Don't worry. I've been sitting on this for a little while. Cause I see like traces of it every now and then when I, I see people in our, in our discord or on Facebook or whoever, and in, just on Twitter, like posting about, um, five specifically and this is a hot take this is a hot because <laughs> i by and large you all everybody on this podcast knows i'm a street fighter 5 fan um and usually what ends up happening is then the discussion turns into well the game was good at the end but the launch sucked and that was an excuse for the way street fighter 5 was like shat all over on launch uh mm-hmm. and in an effort to prevent the narrative rewrite there uh, Street Fighter V had problems, but there, I believe, was a large amount of people that were going to hate whatever it was because it wasn't 4. Mm-hmm. I think that 4, there's a lot of people whose first fighting game, like real fighting game, like not, not talking like, oh, I played in the arcades once when my mom took me to Peter Piper Pizza, so I'm an OG. <laughs> like, it, it, I, I'm saying like the people that played like competitively for a lot of them four was their first game Mm -hmm. and they got good at four in very specific ways. Uh, and those ways weren't rewarded in five. A lot of them weren't, a lot of them were. And so those people played the game, everybody else, they were mad. They said five sucked. And in reality, it's because you sucked. (laughs) (laughs) That's the hot take is that I, I think that I think that five got a lot of undue flack. It got due flack for, for the launch. Like I get like, we'll be yeah. real there. And I, I talked about freedom of expression or lack of expression or earlier. It had some blemishes, but overall it was a decent game. Even at launch, it was a decent game. It had some problems, but it was a decent one. And I think that a lot of folks were just, I hate this. Like street fighter five was terrible. And now when they're coming back when, when six is out and the five players are dominating, there's a, like a lot of the discourse is people that are mad that the game isn't like five, like they're yeah. five players that are like, there's that, but there's a lot of people that are just like, I don't like this because it's not street fighter four. And I see yeah. that the third strike players are even smarter than that now, or they just go back and play third strike. Anyway, yeah. it's the four players that I think that are like coming back thinking they're hot shit. And in reality, yeah. it's like, so well, see, it's, <laughs> that's it's, my it's hot a... take. I think four is a shitty game. It's... <laughs> like, like i had you know for me like personally like i had i had a real kind of like i was kind of that same way too like yeah like i i'm one of the older guys so like i played in the arcades i never played tournaments like some of the og guys like like jeff and uh old man river you know saber those guys but like i grew up in that era and like competitively four was where i started and i kind of had this kind of uh love for four just because of that like there was a lot of memories and like you say storylines and things like that with four you know that were kind of like my coming of age in that in that era right same and like i kind of i kind of held on to that through five and then now that this game's out like i love this game a lot more than i think i ever loved four at any point 
What? And, that, and that's that's crazy for me to say. But whoa, yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, because I'm just like there was there was a time where I was just like I wanted things to go back to there, and yeah. nowadays I I don't see that because like a big this a, a one big point in four that a lot of people hated, even like the the OG players, was like the comeback factor, right? And that yep. carried over in the five with the V triggers and stuff like that. But in yep. this game, like you don't have that, right? Like you you have kind of control over your kind of state in the game with burnout and stuff like that. Yeah, there's exceptions to the rule if you want to talk about JP and him being able to like burn you out, like you know, in certain situations in the corner or whatnot. But sure. you have a lot of control over being put in those situations. And a lot of the comebacks in this game, I don't think you anybody would really say like, oh, it's he came back because of the mechanic. Like there's to me a lot more honest comebacks in this game than in in four and and any time at five yep. right if i come back in this game it's because i'm in burnout and i escaped that situation i got my meter back i'm at three percent health i can't di anymore so i've got to parry or i've got to kill somebody you know be better in neutral and i've got to overcome this whole situation and there's no like ultra to save my ass there's no v trigger activation to, to save me right yeah. Like I've got to honestly win in this game and to, to come back. And I think I, I, for me, I think that's like, I didn't, I didn't think that that was going to be the way for me with this game. Like I figured I'd play it, maybe get to a point like I did in five where I was just like, you know what? I don't want to play this anymore, but like I'm nowhere even close to that at this point. And that to me is probably like been the biggest thing for me. You, you mentioned the like, Hey, I wanted to go back to those old days. And like, that's the part that I think that it's really easy to conflate. Uh, with Street Fighter 4 in particular because um, that game transformed the community and it came at a time where everybody like was united all three of us are playing competitive fighting games now like talking about six because of Street Fighter 4 and I think that from a gameplay standpoint five and four were very different but five absolutely objectively did not have the community impact that that four had and I think a lot of people expected and wanted that um, whether those expectations are realistic as a whole other deal. But with six, six represents, in my opinion, a refinement of Street Fighter V's gameplay. Like it's more like Street Fighter V than any of the other Street Fighters, realistically. That's why all the best Street Fighter V players are the ones winning right now. Um mm. and it's refined that and it has the social and community impact that four has. So yeah. your 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 statement about liking six over four while surprising to me out of the gates like it makes sense man it makes a ton of sense this game is something really fucking special <laughs> yeah so on that note like i mean um we would have Maynard talk about some of the upcoming tourneys but one thing i wanted to ask you john before uh we kind of went into that yeah. was uh about the recent tournament results from this last tournament like did you have any kind of uh impressions or kind of opinions about uh yeah yeah things, i, I get to things be... <laughs> uh you, you weren't in be attendance that, for that one yet right right i get to be that like uh, uh statler and waldorf from the muppets where i'm just sitting on the side throwing throwing pies at people <laughs> <laughs> and i don't have to put myself on the spotlight at all i can just laugh on the side and go oh, oh, oh. um i i so i yeah I, I wasn't in attendance uh i i'm kind of like still trying to find that balance between married life and competitive play um and i think that in the past couple months i i had definitely put more i put priority on the wedding but then when when the game had launched and i was traveling everywhere like like that was not ever going to be sustainable um mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm finding that balance right now and just trying to figure out like what tournaments i can go to and which ones i can't um and it's not like jess isn't letting me but more just like from my from the amount of yeah. time i want to put into it exactly. um yeah. as far as like the results go uh, I think it was fitting that Scott got second. Um, I, I, I think it would have been a better uh, fairy tale if he had won, uh, because I don't believe, uh, I don't believe Scott's won a, a street fighter, modern street fighter tournament in a little while now. Um, yeah. and so I think it's proof that he has been grinding really hard and he's like those old school fundamentals still apply. And I think there's a whole contingent of the community. I think that is inspired by his play. Um, so that was really cool to see him, you know, have a rocky start out, out, out of the launch realistically. Like he wasn't placing very consistently to mm -hmm. boom, second place, beating some of the, beating the guy that 
won the last tournament. Um, yeah. And those two guys that won the 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 one the guy that won the last tournament, Big Mac combo, has also skyrocketed in in um in aptitude and quality of his play. Uh, in my opinion, like he's he's changed from this like really aggressive active style to a react a reactive style, and then being able to turn it on and turn it off. Um, very very strong and versatile style of play. Uh, he just it's attached to Ryu, unfortunately. <laughs> um, <laughs> And then uh, Christian as well. Also, like I think he needed to find his footing at at launch. Uh, he's picked up Guile. That's clearly paying off dividends for him. I believe that that also is a sign that the Arizona scene is not very comfortable with the Guile matchup yet. And that's not Christian's fault or anything. Like I'm not discrediting his win. And if anything, it's going to uh, boost the notoriety of that character in our scene and and force us to practice against it. I say that as somebody yeah. that the world is telling me that Chun Li uh Guile destroys Chun Li and I have no Guiles to practice with or rather the pra- the Guiles that I have practiced with I've lost touch with over the uh, over the past couple months. Um mm-hmm. and so I don't know that matchup right now or how it's evolved in the past, you know, one month alone. So I'm looking forward to having like to Christian's Guile being um relevant in our scene. Uh mm-hmm. I think it the the win was hard earned because he had to blow through two people that I think have beaten him in the past. Um, or specifically big Mac who, uh, frankly dis- dismantled them the first, uh, the last tournament. And now, uh, you know, he, he didn't like Christian didn't lose this, this tournament. So, um, I have, I have spoken to those two guys privately as I, I view them as the future of the fighting game community in Arizona here, at least in the street fighter scene. Um, and I, I, I don't mean to, like claim that I have the right to bestow that on anybody or anything, but like as far, far as two people in the younger generation, uh, as in, yeah. in their twenties right now, um, who are working the hardest and also acting as community leaders. Uh, I, in, in Phoenix, those guys are like, um, they are further. Like I used to consider them my proteges, uh, because I was training them a lot during the pandemic years for street fighter five. Uh, they're, they're, they're long since past that and they're, they're full on, like they're leading the next generation already. Um, so I feel very, very comfortable with how this direction of the scene has gone. And it's, I feel like it's in good hands to continue growing. That's not to say that I'm retiring or anything, (laughs) but, um, those two guys are, are like bright spots in my, in my fighting game career to, to know them, to practice them and to have had an impact on, on them in any way, shape or form. Cause they're, they're carrying the state right now, in my opinion. Um, nice. on, on the flip side, like there are a lot of upsets too. Like, uh, well, I don't even want to call it upsets. Like Maynard, your match against Tony was sick. Uh, and your match against Sia was sick. Um, and like I, I having to get, get to watch both of those, like you've also improved very, very, very rapidly over a short amount of time. Uh, Thank same you. thing with Benny. Both of you guys, again, I mentioned it at the beginning of the, the show, but both of you guys have started playing uh, more patient and more uh, opportunistic, for lack of a better phrase. You guys can capitalize on your opportunities a lot better now. Um, and yeah. you're more thoughtful in creating those opportunities. And that's really annoying to play against now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, like that tournament just seemed like it was a good mix of, you know, old faces doing well coming back having renaissance a la scott you know uh the new the next generation and then the next next generation with freezy who we haven't Mm -hmm. like i've kind of glossed over him but like he has picked up the character that i play and in a shockingly shockingly quick amount of time i don't know anybody that can play that character who picked up that character that quickly uh because chun is not an easy character to play um i say that with my that's my humble brag (laughs) <laughs> and it's 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 flattering that he's playing in a lot of the same ways that i play um he, he's somebody that i can trade tech with um and so i've like i'm at the point now where i'm like i think christian and 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 uh uh chase have both learned a ton f- like I, I i don't know if i can teach them anything more i think they're better than me now so i if anything i have to learn from them but i also still have folks like freezy who i can i can see as somebody that also will uh turn into this awesome fighting game force if he if he chooses to put the time into it and his you know his life circumstances allow for it go to school yeah. uh freezy stay in school <laughs> he doesn't go to school he just finds the time to play all the time because i like see a message it's like 
Anybody want to run a first to five? I got 20 minutes, like probably before school. And I'm just like, first to five in 20 minutes. I was like, man, do you think you're just going to like steamroll somebody? Like, yeah, what? those expectations. <laughs> yeah. Like 20 minutes? That's all you're going to give me? Like, damn. Yeah, this, this kid is 14 years old and he's playing he's playing uh, Street Fighter 15. at a really he's high level. 15 is he 15 now? now? Oh, yeah. it was his birthday recently. Yeah. yeah. Very, happy birthday, Freezy. <laughs> so. Maybe maybe Christian and Chase will take take him under his wing and uh, under their wing rather and then and train him up um, or like Maynard and Ghidorah have already done that too right like yeah he's got yeah. all kinds of mentors which is I think the way this the scene is really blossoming uh, yeah. uh, yeah. real quick I mean, speaking about that age group there was actually another player that was fourteen years old that came to the tournament and yeah, he was playing was, JP and he was doing really well yeah and, he was that's actually one of uh scott's friends sons yeah i was about to say mentoring yeah so i think I saber is taking him under his wing <laughs> yeah so saber saber from what i understand is i used to play with his uh his father i, I want to say x-men versus street fighter back in the day yeah yeah and then um yeah his son's taken the taking the six and like he's been mentoring him um yeah he didn't make top eight but like i think he i think scott said he went three two because like, like, he saw him win three matches so that was wow. cool um yeah, i'm not familiar with chad walk that was the other person that tied for fifth that was playing dj um i've seen them in the discord um yeah i wasn't familiar with them in person didn't get a chance to talk with them then the uh the other two rounding it out was me and then there was uh it's your boy tree um justin oh, yeah. Like, yeah i was real see. surprised with him because like i got the kind of vibe from the discord that like maybe he was a little down on his play and like how things were going recently like i hadn't really watched him play at all like yeah you know but to see him come out and then like I think I did I was sitting back one of his matches when when he won and I was just like he's he's doing well for himself. So Yeah, he yeah, actually think... knocked freezing the losers. Yeah. That was yeah. that was the big thing I saw in the bracket. I didn't see that match, but I saw that in the bracket and I was like, Oh, that's who put Freezy's in the losers. Because I was just like, Why am I playing Freezy next? And I was like, Oh, <laughs> that's why. <laughs> yeah. So, I, yes. I think that the healthiest scenes are the ones that have rivalries at the top, but then also like um a healthy influx of new players uh, that that constantly challenge the mid level players to improve and break into the top echelon, and I see that occurring. There's a, a good mix of fresh faces. There's folks like Paul Rudd as well, like that are that are uh, people from other scenes that are still playing the game. Um, mm -hmm. And then like I I don't I don't really know how how deep we want to go on this one, but there's other tournaments too in addition to the Secret Lab, like the GCU one tournament series that has popped up recently that tony is frequenting yeah. or Ghidorah is, is going to like there's i don't want to call them even liaisons but like there's this like branching web of like satellite scenes like the tucson scene is, has always been there and still there yeah that's, know, that's like, what i was gonna say too like the tucson scene is not even represented here so it's just right. like yeah so that's a Tempe, whole other segment of the community tempe glendale gilbert you know like there's all these different sub communities that are that are building up here and then that is the Street Fighter Four effect. That is the thing that we used to want, uh, or that, that we that we missed, which was like everybody playing the same thing, and then having like almost that like rivalry arcade feel, where like, because I know Tony rolled up to that tournament being like, "I'm going to take all these people's money," right? You don't, <laughs> you don't get that unless you have that, unless you have parallel scenes. That's the the downside is that every tournament organizer, I think, that tries to unite Arizona. Um, and myself included, this is a fool's errand on my, on my part as, um, they always want to unite under one roof. Right. And I get it. And that like, we, well, what ends up happening though, is that all, a lot of the games don't necessarily fit under one roof. Um, I think that that's really good for some of the niche games for everybody to band together and have the potlucks and have that community side that we've been talking about on the show pretty regularly. But from mm. the competitive side, if you have a really strong set of like, like talent pool of players it's not always a good idea to lump them all together constantly because that nukes motivation if you have rivalry pods and this is how california is structured too they will all like come together for these big events but they'll go back and train separately um and i think that like having that that like that feeling and that rivalry feeling and, and which we didn't get that with five realistically we didn't get that with five because the player pool wasn't big enough um so I, I just think that it's nice to have these these scenes that are growing in parallel with each other. And then that that feeling of like being able to just drive somewhere and be like, I'm I'm going to a new place and I'm going to be a bunch of new people, but they all play the same game as me. Like we I haven't gotten that feeling in a very long time. And six, I think, is bringing that back. 
super cool for our local scene. <laughs> nice, nice. So speaking of our local scene, uh, we were going to have Maynard here talk about some of the upcoming tournaments that were coming for our scene. Yeah. Uh, November is going to be a hard month just because we have Thanksgiving and preparing for the holidays. So we did kind of condense a little things a little bit. Um, we have Tucson's event down to the wire that's hosted by Velociraptor at Tucson's police station. That will be happening on the 4th, November 4th. Um, and generally we always do the team events there as well. I think it's been a big home. Uh, so come on out. Usually we always get food there as well. And it's not just pizza. Uh, this last one that we had, we, uh, was this the one that we had carne asada or no, we actually had <laughs> something else, but. Yeah, this last one we had chicken. Actually, we had chicken. <laughs> nice. uh, we got it all shredded up. We had some, made some sandwiches. We got some uh, nice sauces and dips. So it was kind of cool. Uh, definitely come on out to that event. And then in Phoenix, uh, we have the next uh, Secret Labs event that's going to be on the 18th, um, and that will be once again at the Gaming Zone. I did want to try something there. Uh, it's nothing's in set in stone yet, but just to go ahead and spoil it a little bit, I do want to try. Uh, another event after the main tournament. So I might run the tournament just an hour earlier if possible, starting at like five instead of six. And then this event, um, I kind of want to explore around with uh, extreme battles, have an extreme battles roulette, kind of uh, akin to the random fighters that we used to have here in Phoenix, Arizona, but all in the Street Fighter engine. Uh, there are some fun events in there. And uh, I do want to see like someone take advantage of the game systems and just be able yeah. to dominate the whole scene. And I think that'd be a fun uh, side event just as well uh, alongside the big main event. Okay. Okay, cool, cool. Um, I was going to say, yeah, I'm hoping to make one of those Tucson tournaments. Uh, it's probably going to have to be next year. Uh, I mean, it's not too far off, actually. We're looking two months before the end of the year already, which is kind of crazy. Um, I do have the day off for the 18th, but unfortunately I have a, well, fortunately I have a, another wedding to go to. So uh, he's, I'll be, he's I'll, dodging be pre, us. I'll be preoccupied <laughs> for that. So, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, looking forward to see what happens with those tournaments. The yeah, I, re I really want to get out to Tucson tournament just because like I haven't seen those guys in a while, and I've, I've run into a few of them online. Um, and I've played a couple. Uh, yeah, I played a couple sets with Thrasher. Get get pretty manhandled. Uh, I kind of need to reach out to him again and see see where I'm at right now. I mean, uh, just as far as like the storyline of days, I don't even know if we talked about the last down to the wire since our, our month break of talking, but mm -hmm. Thrasher did win the last one. So he is the current reigning champion, uh, mm. beating out Velociraptor in the grand finals. So uh, you kind know, of a cool storyline, seeing, try to see Velociraptor try to take his title back over there I, or seeing if someone else enters the picture and yeah, enters was, in that reign. Uh, one thing I was just thinking of just now was like, I know that the, the Tucson Phoenix thing is kind of, you know, I mean, you guys do the team battles right over there, but I think, uh, like one thing that they did, in, uh, I mean, I'm sure they do this all over the place, was between like my high school and one of their other rival high schools. Is like they would have, uh, so there was a, a football player that played for both of the teams, like just you know, transfers or whatever, right? And unfortunately, like he passed away when he was younger, and they took one of his cleats and made it into like a trophy. And so when they play each other, the winner of the game gets to take that trophy. And I think it would be kind of cool for, like, Down to the Wire to have something like that. So, like, if Phoenix ends up on top – or, well, you guys don't even divide it into Phoenix-Tucson. But maybe if, really a, maybe, maybe if it's a Phoenix-Tucson, whoever ends up winning the tournament gets to hold onto the trophy and then just kind of have it go back and forth. So, right now, like you said, Thrasher's the reigning champ of Down to the Wire. So, if one of you guys go down there and beat him, then you guys take the trophy and, you know, it's represented in Phoenix or wherever until the time – next, next, next tournament. I think that would be kind of cool. Yeah, we actually divided the teams by first place and second place. And the funny oh. thing was, was that the second place uh, Velociraptor, he picked all the Phoenix guys first. So we were like, oh, it's honorary Phoenix team. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Oh, man, well, this, is, this has been a great discussion. Great to be back. Um, yeah, we're probably, we should be back on our regularly scheduled program going forward, unless uh, some other things come up uh, later in the year. But uh, was there anything else you had to say, John? Oh, no, I, yeah, I'm good. Uh, thanks, guys, for coming to my wedding. <laughs> <laughs>
Cool. Uh, you can find us on uh, twitch.tv slash spiral series, youtube.com slash spiral series, and an absolute, or I didn't read it this time, on Spotify. <laughs> we search for absolute guard. And I think we're still on Apple Podcasts, but I have yet to actually verify that. Yeah. Uh, have a good night. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one, everybody.